One of the nice things about contained games, board games, card games, is it takes something larger uh, life or some aspect of life and it makes it smaller and manageable. It does this through abstraction and it does this through focus. It uh, abstracts out unimportant things or it just doesn't uh, address them at all. So in the countless games about medieval trading, for example, those traders, whether they have a family or any social relationships or um, health, uh, doesn't really matter. That's all taken out of the game and you don't have to think about it. And that's nice. It makes it simpler and it makes it ab us able to play these games and uh, interact with whatever it is the game is supposed to be focusing on. At the same time, it does this at the expense of uh, some things that could be interesting and, and are maybe worthwhile to, to uh, explore. For example, if we go back to the earlier example of the medieval trader, uh, their family life actually seems more interesting to me than their trading activities. One game that, uh, that tries to do both, um, that lets you focus in on a particular place and time and a particular occupation, in this case, detective, uh, but still incorporates the family life and whatever other events are going on for the protagonist of the game is Android. In Android, players take on the role of one of five very specific detectives as they attempt to solve a murder in the um, near future world of New Angeles. New Angeles is a maudlin, pulpy, noir world, kind of, uh, I, th I think, definitely influenced by the book Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep? The role you choose to take is going to heavily influence how the game is played for you and what sort of story is going to be interwoven into your detective work as the game progresses. The characters are emotional wrecks and if you don't enjoy that, you're probably not going to enjoy Android. The game has lots of cards. It has light cards, dark cards, plot cards, and special cards that are character specific that give you certain um, abilities or things you have to deal with, like one character has to deal with their money issues, another character has to deal with their sanity, another issue, a character has to deal with their mood, another character has to deal with their, um, their like, there are certain directives as a biroid, and another character has to deal with the fact that they're wrapped up in themselves, which actually all the characters are. On all of these cards, there are these little blocks of text, these paragraphs and quotes and conversations, little chunks of story that I really suggest you read out loud when you're playing the game. The chunks of text are going to create a story in much the same way that a poem creates meaning. The poem creates meaning in between the lines of text, whereas the, the, the paragraphs are going to create a story uh, in between the paragraphs along with the gameplay. It's all going to combine to create a, a, a sort of a unique narrative to each game, even though you have these sort of specific touch points that are going to occur again and again if you play multiple games of Android. And if you don't enjoy that, you're not going to enjoy Android at all. Uh, but if you do think you might enjoy that, you might want to know what you actually do in Android beyond emote. Um, one thing you do, a big thing you do, is fly around in flying cars. In the future, no one walks and everyone flies in flying cars. So that's represented by this little art here. Uh, and each character has their own car that has a different sort of speed, which is um, expressed in a, in a smaller or larger arc. And you go from one place to another with this arc and follow up leads. So Lewis here, he could go here and follow up this lead. What can you do when you follow up leads? A big thing you can do uh, when you follow up a lead is, because it's your job is you can place evidence. Now each character is going to have someone that they think is guilty and someone that they think is innocent. So when they follow up a lead they can take a piece of evidence from a pool and they can place it on one of the people. Now the pieces of evidence are going to have some sort of number which is going to determine innocence or guilt at the end of the game. And that's pretty much it for that portion of your job. And that right there is going to cause problems for some people who are looking for a murder deduction game. Uh, because unlike a lot of murder deduction games, there is no murder predetermined at the outset of a game. And there's not clue, there is no sleeve where you stick 
who did it and then try to discover it. No, you are, and, and this is a concept that I think is important to understand in a lot of games, you're rarely a particular individual, even if you are that medieval trader that we spoke about before, you're rarely that medieval trader. You're some force acting on behalf of that medieval, medieval trader um, who is, it's not a role-playing experience per se, you're also acting as a narrative force. So in, in terms of the placing of evidence, you are the narrative force acting on behalf of that character. And there's more of that in other aspects of the game that we'll touch on when we get to those aspects of the game. Somewhat related to your job when, you're play, when you follow up a lead is, uh, rather than place evidence, you can dig deep into the conspiracy puzzle. So if you look at this eyeball here, this is the murder. And what you're trying to do is link the murder to whatever groups that are present in New Angeles might be, have been involved in the murder. So that's all done very abstractly through this puzzle system where you can link, place pieces of the puzzle, link them to particular groups uh, along the edge here, and the more links that are linked to that group, the more points certain things are gained. So the bread and butter and the meat and potatoes of the game is going to be flying around in your flying car or motorcycle and following up leads so that you can do your job and place evidence on suspects or dig deep into the conspiracy behind the murder. But that's not all. That's not the only way you can get points, and that's not all you can do in the game Android. Each of the players is going to have a personal plot that they are going to be going through um, either weekly or throughout the entire uh, game term, which is two weeks, uh, that is going to update periodically. Anytime there's this orange and kind of grayish green space here, you're going to advance the plots of the characters. And those plots are going to be worth points and also have additional effects potentially and are one of the funnest parts of the game and I think the part that people tend to focus on in the groups that I've played with. These plots are going to be resolved through a series of cards and these cards are going to have two different outcomes. Uh, whether the good outcome comes or the bad outcome comes depends on baggage and each card is going to have different conditions under which good baggage or bad baggage is placed upon the card. When you get to one of those checkpoints that I showed you on that um, weekly chart thing, uh, you're going to determine whether the, the plot takes a turn for the good or for the bad. And that's from the perspective of the player uh, in terms of points and the perspective of the person in terms of kind of positively resolving whatever issues they have. And they all have issues. Those of you paying attention may remember that I mentioned earlier two things. One is that there's more uh, areas where there's this kind of overarching narrative control rather than the role-playing aspect of being in the character's body, and two, that there are light and dark cards. Light cards are beneficial to a character, and dark cards are to their detriment. Light cards are played by the player of the character, and dark cards are played by the other characters. Now, one thing I found when playing this game is that people don't necessarily want to play dark cards. They don't, they kind of get wrapped up in their own character's story and don't want to uh, mess with other characters. And they, I think everyone kind of wants to see a good outcome, though it's, it's, it's enjoyable also to see this sort of outcome here. Ah! Um, so how does the game incentivize that? It does that through this light and dark track here, maybe called a twilight track. I don't know what it's called. Um, so how this works is to play a light card, you got to move this this way, right? You can also discard cards to make up the difference. Uh, but then once you're here, it's really hard to play light cards because they all have a cost. Three. If you have three there, you're going to have to discard three cards. It's not that easy. I mean, you can get three cards, but that takes a lot of time, which are the action points of this game, and that is precious. So... What you want to do is you want to also get dark cards of other characters and then manage to play them on their turn because those also have a cost which let you shift it the other way. And so each of the character kind of ends up, if, you, if you're familiar with the, the traditional role playing, you kind of end up game mastering for each other um, and are prompted to do so by the, the, the game Android's own mechanisms. Android is a heavily mechanistic storytelling game where you're you're most invested in your own particular person but you also have a hand in how other people's stories come out and it's the whole the general story 
that needs to be important to you in order for you to want to play this game. Uh, and you also have to be able to tell the story, but not have near as much control as to what its contents are. There are these set paragraphs and they kind of come into play when they come into play through the gameplay. Um, part of the enjoyment is delighting in when they come into play and the story that you maybe didn't plan on that might develop as a result of that. Uh, so looking at Android versus um, a standard kind of strategy contained game, you have to want more narrative than a standard strategy contained game. But looking at Android versus um, a more freeform storytelling game, you have to uh, enjoy what can come from disparate elements that are maybe in the same line that kind of create some meaning that you weren't necessarily intending. Um, it's great if you have an appreciation for the maudlin. If you don't, then I can't recommend it. But if you, if you enjoy the, the melodrama, and if you enjoy uh, the dark future, and if you enjoy uh, what, what happens behind the curtain when you are engaged in medieval trading or detective work or all those other things and wonder, what are these people, machines, just so engaged with their job? Don't they have feelings as well? Then I highly suggest Android.